Start streaming. Let me see if this still works. I just got back from a 12 hour drive home from a visit to my hometown and got into work. It's 2.43 a.m. Good time to start some work, I guess. All right, let's see if this is going to come up. There we go. Looks like that's working. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm just going to do, see what's up with this one. Mark is here. He's leaving me. He is going back to Florida, the hot stinking Florida. He's been here since June. So I'm going to miss having him in house for sure, which means vacations over for me and time to get back to work. So we'll start off with this one. This note struck me as hilarious. Let's read the note, shall we? Note says, this is uh, iPhone 6. I think it's actually, a, yeah, it's a 6S here for data recovery. Um, from the UK, device problem work requested. This is the note. I cracked the screen and then some tap water dropped into one of the cracks. The crack is located on the right hand side of the home button, I think they mean power button, um, top next to the speaker. Okay? Uh, the phone speaker made a fuzzing noise and then the phone switched off. In panic, I tried to turn it on, but I only got a dark blue screen. Then I plugged it into the computer and the computer detected the phone. The next day, it didn't switch on at all. I got a local, quote, phone repair shop to remove the battery, but it's possible he damaged the phone further. He's clearly a moron who knows nothing about phones. Please turn over. I don't care about my phone at all. All I need is my data, specifically my notes plus voice audio files. If you can recover all the files, that's a bonus. I write music and have got a lot of lyric ideas I was working on and song ideas. I'm so depressed to think they could be gone. Sad face crying. Please help, heart. P.S. The moron who removed the battery didn't clean or open the motherboard. He just removed the battery really rough and not gently at all. I think a screw is missing from the metal plate you use to take out and remove the screen or battery. So, water damage complicated by, quote, moron damage. Let's see what we have. Um, and then she has this nice little note here that says, no battery, no battery, a little piece of paper where the battery goes. So we will start by taking out some screws. Screw tray. Oh, everything's going to be stolen from my station. I've been out of here for about a week at my dad's house. So I will go steal a screw tray from somebody else. Ooh, can I steal? Let's see what's going on. Oh, some people are up at three o'clock in the morning. It's midnight. What is this? It's not midnight. It's 2.44 a.m. Please tell me I have some screwdrivers. Yes, screwdrivers. Perfect time for my overnight shift. You just bumped Rossman replays. I watched Lewis's long stream today in the car on the way up here on IQ. That was fun. And then I got accused of trolling, um, which is entirely unfair, especially since he uh, trolls, trolls me constantly. He was just telling me <laughs> later tonight about how funny he thinks it is that and how easy it was for him to uh, convince the whole world of his ridiculous Rich Jessa brand um, 
And he just thinks that's hysterical. He's like, it started out as a joke, but then everybody believed it. Ha, 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 ha. And, uh, and then he was telling me why he thinks that is. And he thinks um, that that doesn't happen to him because he has a hole in his bathroom door. And he has a wobbly floor. And, um, and he has a $12 tripod that he has his camera on. And I'm like, uh, this floor is way more wobbly than yours is. Um, he's not poor, he's cheap. It, it, well, it's ridiculous, because uh -huh. he has, he's, this is what he's telling me. He's like, it's my hole in the, in the floor, and uh, it's just so easy with you, Jessa, with this whole, like, you know, cars and lake houses, people eat that up. And I'm like, you pay $30 for a fucking sandwich. You know, he's like, no one would even believe that. You go ahead and say that. Um, and, and then, and then I'm like, you're, you have a two thousand dollar camera. I have a, I have a camera that is literally captain taped to a piece of shit tripod that is alligator clamped to a DC power supply to turn on. He has a seven hundred dollar microphone. I have the $20, where is it, $20 uh, Meteor mic. I, it's just ridiculous. Oh, then he's telling me, is this true, Mark? He said, it's your accent. I'm like, what accent? I'm like, I just came back from an event called the Blessing of the Combines. <laughs> I, I was in a combine. I listened to country music the entire time. He's like, no, it's your, it's, you just have this accent that's just like reeks of like, my Chase account never dips below 8,000. That's what he said. <laughs> what? Where are you getting this from? And then I was telling him all this stuff. Like, I'm like, my sister and all her kids have flip phones, which she fucking put in rice after it got water damaged. Oh my God. Um, and I told him, my dad, my dad used super glue when his, when one of his teeth cracked. Uh, so my dad, he really did that. Didn't work, by the way. Don't ever try that at home. He was like, yeah, just, uh, it was really, it made this like horrible kind of toxic fume thing going on for, oh, yeah. <laughs> for a while. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, dad is the ultimate, ultimate fixer though. I mean, while I was there, it was one of the projects dad did while I was there. We got, we, you know, dad's got this old beater boat he lives um down on the eastern shore of virginia and the boat has this like oil sensor problem and it's screaming its head off beep 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 it's it is so loud that uh it, you know it sounds like some kind of air raid siren that clearly means stop driving this boat this second and dad's like oh i'm sure it's fine i checked the oil reservoir on the top there's oil there there's oil coming out of the bottom i think it's fine um, and so dad's, here's dad's solution to the oil sensor beeping. What do you think it's going to be, Mark? Disconnect the speaker. Yes. So dad, <laughs> dad can't hear for shit. And so dad is, um, he is, he's, you know, he understands that there's this ear splitting sound, but he can't really hear it. So he can't identify where on the instrument panel this ear splitting shriek is coming from. So he um, has to have like a bunch of kids get on there and be like, yeah, it's right from right here. So he rips apart the instrument panel. And then he, he doesn't, he's, he's doesn't just rip out the speaker. He, uh, he comes to me, he, he's, he's real proud of himself after he did it. He cut the speaker so that it had two lead wires so that he could reuse it for practical jokes. <laughs> and he's like, you know what I'd like to do? You know, that asshole neighbor has got this light that comes on, you know, it's motion activated. I want to hook it up to that light. So every time that fucker's light comes on, this ear splitting air horn. <laughs> well, that, you know, that sounds pretty good, Dad. So he took out the speaker and then he um, rigged up. He's like, what do I have around here? Looks like it'd be a 12 volt powered light. Something, something from these trailer lights. So he like has some ancient, decrepit trailer lights that he pulls out. 
pulls out a light. So he rigs it up so that, there, that the ear splitting oil sensor is now just a furiously mad blinking LED light. He was super proud of that repair. The other repair he was really proud of when I got there was he, he, he got a power washer at the dump and it didn't have a, a pull strain so you couldn't turn it on. And then dad was like, well, you know, race cars don't have things like batteries. You know, they, they just turn them on by using a, a drill on, I'm making up buzzwords now, on the flywheel, something like that. So he decided he'd do the same thing. So we got this ancient drill that looks like it was about 400 years old. And he hooked it up to the flywheel of the power washer and it fucking worked. Way to go. Way to go, Bill. Way to go, Bill Jones. All right, let's take a look at this board and see what's what. Now, I didn't really notice any signs of, of moron damage here when I took this out. In fact, he had both screws. Just for the record, Moron had both screws here at the battery. Let's take a look under the microscope. So there was some water damage on this sticker here that I just took off. So we'll, well, let's look at that. So we've got kind of our signs of water around there. So that looks pretty typical. Looks all nice and clean in there. Looks all nice and clean in there. Let's look up at the top of the phone. Let's guess that water is going to bother something around these connectors since it was kind of at the top of the phone and let's try to get these suckers off. There's a hot spot for water right there. That's a VCC main cap next to the camera LDO in the 6S. So let's see. Let's see what we can find. Mark, what time do you have to drive out of here? Uh, we're going to try to leave by noon. By noon? Yeah. That's a lot better than 9 a.m. That was my target today, but we... It was incredibly <laughs> difficult with this big pile of boy cousins that their entire M.O. was try to make it so that we don't have to leave, ever. <laughs> and so the, all of the, you know, clean up all of this. It was like five minutes before we were going to leave, and I can hear them downstairs going, Hey, let's jump in the canal. <laughs> no. That's not happening. Oh, I got a huge score. You have to see, you have to check this out, Mark. Uh, on my mother in the 90s, I have no idea why, but she bought this ridiculous lamp. It's a full-size floor lamp that is shaped like a cactus. Uh-huh. Yeah, crazy, crazy thing. And it was just such this weird thing. Mom was like a fun person, and she, um, she, so she had this crazy cactus lamp. And she had it for a long time, and then I guess somebody knocked it over one day. And so I don't, I don't know how this came up, but I was looking on eBay for a uh, crazy cactus lamp. And I found the exact same one. And of course it was seller pickup, but it was seller pickup in Ellicott City, Maryland, which is, uh, you know, about two or three hours from home. So I sent my niece to go get it. So I bought this on eBay. So she went and got it. So I had to throw it in the back of the truck today. And I'm super excited to check out this cactus lamp. Haven't been home yet, so. It could be the same exact one. It could be. It could be the same exact one. You never know. All right, let's go ahead and take off this shield as well, just because we see some signs of water here at the top of the phone. And let's catch up on the heavily neglected chat. All right, let's, let's read this. 
a bunch of hellos about an afternoon at 2.44 a.m. Just about to leave for my flight to Istanbul, not Constantinople. Um, upcoming event, what? I ordered a microscope from your link. I have a couple of questions. Uh, okay. How is everyone? I'm 23. Me too. All right. Uh, any classes starting in October? Yes. Uh, we just decided that like 10 minutes ago. What did we say, Mark? Uh, we considered yeah, we're, only one. We did. We're going to do October. We're going to do the two middle weeks. We're not going to be too close to Halloween. I think we're going to do October 9th week and then the following week. So we're going to list two, two October courses, and we'll do that in the next couple of days. Oh, I get to go home for five days. You get to go home for five days? Yay! <laughs> What is the difference between iPhone and Android mobile repairing technic? technic? Is that the same or different? Uh, Largely the same. It's more difficult to get information for some of the Android phones. So you're having to use your skills of just reading a board. And uh, Mark has spent a lot of time. You only need one screwdriver. You only need one screwdriver, that's true. Um, but they, they'll have their own set of signature failures and signature failures guide a lot of our thinking and a lot, a lot of what we did. 2.50 p.m. in Australia. Fantastic. Uh, 9 o'clock. It's 3.46 in Brazil. We all see the Gucci work chair. This chair? <laughs> um, from Staples. Yes, that's pretty funny. Um, let's see. Mark's in the house. Tell him I said hi, says Q's tech service. All right, let's see. A bunch of people are telling us what time it is. Uh, Working on an iPhone 2. Water damage. Can't figure out what's wrong with it. Where is Mark? Mark is driving to Jacksonville, Florida from Rochester, New York. That's going to suck. It's going to suck twice as much as the 12-hour drive that I just did with four kids in the car. He's going to have... Uh, three kids plus two dogs. All right, let's see. Um, what does the Barlow lens do? I don't use a Barlow lens. Barlow lens makes everything better. <laughs> Mark says Barlow lens makes everything better. I say Barlow lens makes everything way far away, and I can't stand it. Is this an Amscope microscope? Yes, it is. Um, not that there's any difference. I don't, I believe that the Amano microscopes and the Amscopes are the same from, you know, they're just sort of redistributed Chinese microscopes. All right, let's get this shield off. The yield hot air station that I haven't used for a whole week. Seems like yesterday, really seems like yesterday. Oh, you guys can't see any of this, sorry. So Mark, guess what I ordered last night? Um, (laughs) Something really fancy and expensive. Something, fuck you! No, I spent $30 on a green screen. Uh, Yeah! Yeah, It's gonna be awesome. Now we gotta get a green man suit. Yes! Yes, all right, so there's a little bit of corrosion, it looks like, on uh, some around backlight area. Uh, you mean September courses? Nope, September is already listed, already booked up. We uh, booked the last spot a few days ago in September, so now we're, we're uh, um, if you want to come to Practical Board Repair School with us, the first chance that you can sign up for is October, which we haven't listed yet, but it'll be on the iPad Rehab um, website. All right, let's see. Yeah, so the unconference. Yes, we're all going to the iFixit unconference. We finally got our tickets for that, and we're all set to go check check that out. So that should be fun. I saw, if you guys are coming to the iFixit unconference, I saw on one of the meta posts on iFixit meta, which is where you kind of talk about uh, things that are kind of tangential to repair. 
Is that the accent using words like tangential? When when was the last time you said that? That's not even how you really say that. Yeah, and well, the meta is like. Wait, do you say meta? Yeah. Instead of meta? Yeah. What? Um, that's really it's it's where you talk about I fix it. It's where you talk about I fix it. Yes. So those guys had a post on there called. Topics to discuss at the September conference. So if you're going, head over to that post and chime in. Because the guy's on there. You know, I'm, I'm honestly really excited about going to the iFixit unconference in September to meet Old Turkey from... Yes. Yes, Old Turkey and Meyer from famous guys from iFixit Answers community. Also Dan from the the MacBook community over there. These guys have answered thousands of questions over there. So it will be fun to actually, I love like meeting in person, you know, kind of repair people that you, that you know, who's going to the unconference in September? Who is going? Why don't you use the Barlow lens, Jessa? Uh, because I firmly believe that, um, anatomy and physiology and the way your brain and hand-eye coordination work? Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I firmly believe that noobs like, you know, Mark Schaefer, what does he know? Um, uh, that the, the way your brain works, that, that to have this very close, closed in, uh, you know, if you think about how you would really do something very detailed without a microscope, you would bring it very close to you and that kind of helps your brain to sort of move your hands in a tiny area. Oh, my multimeter went to sleep. Um, but, you know, it, it's funny. I think that there could be a, men, um, a man, woman gender difference. All the women here do not use a Barlow lens. We like to work kind of needlepoint close. And I think men like, you know, big and... No. It's definitely all in whatever you start out with. Whatever you start out with. If you spend two weeks... Well, I had, a, I had a Barlow, a Barlow lens when I started, but I just didn't use it. You know how they all come with the 2X and the 0.5X? Yeah. Yeah, if know. you would have used it, you, would, you wouldn't be able to work without it. I guess so. I guess so. All right, I'm measuring this particularly crappy looking cap. Where'd he go? Over here. All right, let's see how we're doing over here. 0.578, that actually seems okay. 0.512 seems okay. All right, let's get in here and measure a VCC main cap. What I'm doing is measuring in diode mode, and I'm checking to see if there's a short to ground. 0.339 seems okay. All right, seems okay, seems okay. Uh, this I'm pretty sure is VCC main here, so that should also be the same. What was that? Uh, pieces of solder that were left in the screw tray. Okay. All right, those all seem normal. VCC main seems normal, and the only physical damage that I see, I think that before, you know, I'll put this in ultrasonic uh, later, but since we're doing a stream, I'm going to just see what happens if I try to boot. iPad Rehab, when you said Dan from the MacBook community, were you talking about Dan Drozda? I'm talking about Dan J, you know, from iFixit Answers, the guy that answers all of the MacBook questions. I don't know if that's the same guy or not. I don't, I don't really know him personally. All right. Fixing things for you works at 1x a lot for trace repair, meaning not using a Barlow lens. Fantastic. All right, so I'm going to connect to DC power supply. So I should not get one, lol. Well, get one and see what your personal preference is. When people come to the course, we have Barlow lenses and you can try them out or not, you know, and just kind of figure out what what is your personal style? All right, I'm going to connect DC um, power supply to see if we get a normal high or low boot sequence of current consumption on this sucker. And DC power supply looks 
pretty normal, possibly normal. With the minimal damage on this board, I would hope that it would actually boot and be detected by iTunes and that we've kind of cleared um, the clear obvious corrosion at VCC main. Maybe that was the, the problem, I'm not sure. All right, let's give it a second to see if it can uh, actually boot or not. All right. Thanks for the vice LOL, but two capacitors look really talk to you, Jessa. A, that's a little bit too much Jack Daniels in that post for me to understand what you mean on that. All right. Do you connect to iTunes? Yes, it does. All right. So this phone can boot. So let's see if it can have a display. That will be the easiest moron damage recovery ever, if so. All right, so let's see, that's all 5S stuff. That's also 5S stuff. Where is the 6S? 5S, 5S. 6S. All right. Did you start calling TriStar Frystar? That is pretty funny, I remember that. I remember that, but no, I'll, I'll definitely start doing it from now on. Fry star it is. Who made that comment? Let's see. Crazy face McGee. Fry star. I like fry star. I like it. All right, let's get a screen on here. Let's see if I can remember how to connect screens to iPhones. It's been a while. Gotta connect the battery first. Gotta always connect the battery. No, you don't, Mark. <laughs> You're trying to troll me. That one might be a little janky. Let's see. Between the two caps near the chip on the display just now, a bubble popped. Great. Sounds like it's the alcohol that I just put on there. Oh, this one says 6S, no backlight. How about this one? Is this a good screen? Unmarked screen? We'll find out. Let's find out. Seems a little crunchy. But maybe, maybe it's fine. All right, did diode measurements towards a healthy phone and all is okay. Yeah, nothing jumped out at me. What I did was I looked for physical damage and then I tested in diode mode for any kind of obvious short to ground on any line that those damaged components were on and I didn't find any. So then I went ahead with, let's see if it can actually uh, boot. So I applied DC power to see if it would actually have a short or an open line or what's up with it and it did consume normal current consumption and it was detected by iTunes, which means it boots. So from there, we're going to stick a screen on it and see, does it actually produce a display? So let's see. All right, I don't see any kind of display on this screen, but having been out of, out of here for a week. All right, so I see backlight, but no image. Great, my favorite. That is gonna be more on damage. We're gonna get over here if this is gonna be an AP reset. So we have, uh, let's go to camera. So we have a backlight. See how bright that is? Backlight, no image. But it is booting and is detected by iTunes. So we need to get it to have image in order to get a path to data. So let's look into why does this phone not have image? And let me minus some of this stuff. Alrighty. First thing is parts problem. Let's rule out a parts problem by trying a different screen to see if it has image on a different screen. Maybe it does, and that would be easy, yay! So rule number one, you don't have a board problem until you know you don't have a parts problem. And I don't know I don't have a parts problem. I could have a parts problem, so I'm gonna rule that out.
All right, so I see current consumption and I see no image on that screen. All right, so two screens with no image. So let's go ahead and look around at image and see if we can see why. Why you got no image? All right, let's go on a hunt. More undamaged. Sounds like what I'm doing to a whole lot of donor phones scattered over my bench top. That's pretty funny. Okay. So let's take a look, a hard look here at image and see what we can find. All right. Let's go ahead and get rid of some of the silicone waterproofing so that we can at least get a good look. So I'm going to take my heat way down and pick. What up, Jessa? I just woke up, says Twitch guy. Is this live? No freaking way! You're up working at 3.14 a.m. Oh, way. No. I'm sure he's in a different time zone. There's no way it could actually be 3.14 a.m. That's insane. Normal people don't work those kind of ridiculous hours. All right, we're gonna go on a little bit of a dig. Try to find why we ain't got no image. So Mark, what kind of accent should I try to, um, restore my proper reasonable reputation and get rid of the, the effects of trolling. Um, Romanian? Romanian? Yeah. Give me an example. Let's hear a little. Oh, I, I can't do that. What? <laughs> Southeast Asian. Southeast Asian? I don't, I don't think I can do any of those. I did think it was pretty impressive that one uh, thing that went around that was the chick that could do something like 23 different accents in two minutes. Yeah. Well, that was pretty cool. Now you should do country accent. Country? Yeah. I could do country. I mean, I just did get back from, I was in a combine yesterday. It was hilarious though the the girls did one of these spin the wheel and you gotta you, you gotta talk to the farmer and, and he's got this wheel of fortune thing you have to answer a quiz question to get a prize. Of course, every kid gets a prize regardless of of their stunning lack of knowledge of farming. And so the question that the girls got was name a brand of tractor. So I turned him around, pointed to the closest combine, and just said, Can you read the letters printed on that big green one? And they were like, you yeah, know, they're, they're six years old. So they were like, G -G -G Joan Deere. Close enough. And I'm like, what kind of Rochester raised kid doesn't know what from birth, what the hell a John Deere is. You see a green tractor, you think John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. The whole time I was in the combines though, I was thinking, wonder how hard it is to fix these things. Wonder if these guys are, are, are pissed at the service they get from John Deere. So Mark, guess how much a combine costs? Which by the way, is a piece of equipment that is only used one week out of the whole year. Uh, at least a hundred thousand. Three hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Oh. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Fucking John Deere. They'll tell you who's rich. John Deere. <laughs> hey, guess what I found the other day? Uh, something to do with John Deere in back at the house? No, just speaking of equipment that uh, is normally expensive and we wouldn't need. Okay. I found a government surplus website where I can buy school buses for $1,000. School each. buses for $1,000? Yeah. Or 
dump trucks for five thousand. Wow. Yeah. I told Cecilia that I'm buying a dump truck when we get back. Absolutely. I think we should get a school bus and have it be the iPad rehab school bus that we pick up the students <laughs> from the micro hotel. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay. It's, it's uh, publicsurplus.com. It's nationwide. You can go <coughs> down to the area. There, there's school buses for sale around here. I bet. But they're going to be all rusted out Rochester school buses. All right. Let's see. You see a green tractor. You think DRM. That's pretty funny. Okay. Let's see what's going on here for Image. Let's take a look around Image Town. Connector seems okay. Do we have a problem here at our image filter? Nope, not really. Do we have a short to ground on our 5v7 line? Let's find out. Do we? Nope. All right, then here's the here's the one we don't want to have happen. Do we have a short to ground on the goddamn AP LCM reset line? Please say no. Let's find out. Uh, I forget which one it is. Is it this guy or that guy? I think it's this guy. Nope, it's that guy. All right, I don't see, nothing is jumping out at me for what would be an obvious image problem. Let's look over at Chestnut and just see if there's any kind of, ooh, there is water by Chestnut. Oh, what the heck? I'm stunned this thing can boot. It's missing a resistor that I thought was required. Well, la dee da Mark, look at this. What is up with that? I don't think a 6S can boot without that fucker. One, two, three. That guy. Isn't he on one of the... That was the S plus we were looking at. Oh, is it? Yeah. Ah. So... So he's fine. Maybe. All right. Okay, so I do see some corrosion around here by Chestnut, which is our image driver. So let's go ahead and nip this bracket out a little bit, and then, then it will be time for an ultrasonic bath to clear out shiz under there. All right, let's see if, where's a good place to cut that sucker. Probably not right there. All right, let's get some other tweezers so that I don't have to jack up that pair. Where's my red tweezers? I have been, my whole station has been robbed. Mark, are you excited to get back to the land of nobody messing with your tools while you're not here? <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I'm excited to get back to Florida and stay inside for the next month and a half. <laughs> what do you think Max is going to say when you guys get home? Is he going to like... He's going to be really happy to have all those toys. Again. Yeah, I bet. Was he gonna, what, what toy do you think he's going to go for first? Uh... The, the Dragon Castle playset thing. The Dragon Castle playset. Definitely. Alright, let's just... Actually, I, kn I know what he's going to do. He's going to ask for the laptop. <laughs> That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Alright, there we go. Now let's wiggle this. So what are you going to listen to in the car for... 20 hours. Um, so, you know that show Reading Rainbow? Uh, yeah. Um, LeVar Burton does a podcast now where he picks short stories he really likes and reads them. Okay. Are they, like, child friendly? Um, yeah. We listened to, we were looking, you know, like, what is child friendly? We listened to Jim Gaffigan's. Yeah, uh, he's good. Thing from Netflix, Cinco, I think is what it was called. But yeah, we on our way to uh, 
Niagara Falls, we listened to a couple of the LeVar Burton things, and yeah. they're, they're really, like, family-friendly. Well, it was really tough. I was like, what is a family-friendly comedian? So then I would dug up Bill Cosby. <laughs> you know, and, and as soon as I, because I was like, I remember, you know, like, uh, you know, Bill Cosby and his story about the, giving the kids chocolate cake for breakfast, you know, but now it's just like, even my 12 year old was like, um, isn't Bill Cosby in jail? Uh, I mean, his whole voice and his stories, like, you know, as he's, as he's talking about my wife, you know, and I'm just like, oh, you're just. It, it, the whole tone of everything he says these are all from the 80s it's just not the same anymore <laughs> just not the same alright let's kind of get this all the way off all the way off come on get off my board alright So it's 3.30 a.m. and I'm watching Jessa fix the board. Me too. I'm watching, my, I'm watching my hands. Mark's like, not me. Yeah, watching Jessa painfully struggle with a bracket, like a moron. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's see. Yep, so it's this speck of corrosion. Look at that. Look at that shiz all around here so that means that there's going to be corrosion under chestnut so let's go ahead and give it an ultrasonic bath and then we'll see if we need to replace chestnut or not all right so it's going to go take a bath <coughs> It looks terrible. Yes, Bill Cosby show was great. And to this day, I remain one of the very few that say he's in cosent. He is not in cosent. Come on now. All right, let's see. Uh, let's scroll. Get a school bus, kit it out with a generator, repair gear, travel to USA, and do iPhone, iPad repairs. I think somebody has already done that. It was really funny. I intended on my on my vacation to uh, to stop by one of the guys in the repair community. Kevin um, is you know like I, he's on my radar screen because I've 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 known him for a few years. This is, and by known him, I mean never laid eyes on him. But <laughs> in the uh, in the repair community kind of Facebook groups, this guy I know is from um, where I grew up. And so I, I, he was on my radar screen when I was, I was taking the kids to the beach. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's got a shop right around here. So I was looking it up. I'm like, yep, there's his shop right there. And then I was uh, looking on my phone and 10 seconds later he posts, oh, does anybody know about this Note 5? And and I'm like, I don't know, man, but I just passed your shop 10 seconds ago. And he was like, sounds like you're going to the beach. Yes, which was a fantastic, fantastic day at the beach. My kid, Bailey, learned a hard, hard lesson, Mark. He, we went to Marty's Playland, which is the, the seediest boardwalk place you can play ski ball that has, like, the same ski balls that they had when I was a kid. I mean, this is, like, some some 40-year-old shit. Oh, you got a skee-ball board to fix. I do? Yeah. Here? Yeah, that's what yes! the uh, Atari guy brought. Yes! Where is it? I want to do it. That is so awesome! Uh, I don't know where it ended up. All right. Well, I'll look up the ticket. That sounds sweet. I want to totally fix skee-ball. Does he have a whole skee-ball machine, and he's local? Um, I think so, yeah. Like, at his house? Uh, I don't know if it's at his house. Is there a place to play ski ball that he's fixing stuff for? That sounds pretty sweet. Yeah. Ski ball is somehow like way easier as an adult. You know, it was it was. Um, so what happened? Like, were the were the balls like weighted so they wouldn't go straight or something? No, this place <laughs> is the. What's great about Marty's Playland? Everyone should go to Marty's Playland. Is that 
You can sit there and play skee ball and you can just roll these balls and they'll go into the 40, 40, 40. It's kind of hard to get them to go into 50, but you'll, you'll, you can, <coughs> you can do it. It's fun. Here's what's great about Marty's Playland. Marty's Playland is the only place on earth where they still have these, uh, bins of AliExpress crap that nobody wants like parachute guys and, uh, um, like, a, a whistle, uh, fuzzy, a fuzzy dice. It's not fuzzy. It's just kind of foam now. Things that, you know, oh, the Chinese handcuffs. <laughs> and you can put, it used to be 10 cents, but now it's a quarter. You put a quarter into one of these cranes but the cranes actually work. They grab stuff always, 100% oh, time. I remember when they used to do that. Yeah. So, you know, so my little six year old was like, I'm going to try to get a Super Bowl. And I'm like, oh, a Super Bowl? That's going to put a hurting on a crane. I don't think any crane can <laughs> lift up Super Bowls. Guess what happened? Was it, it like three point? Yeah. Three point metal drops down and it expertly grabs a super ball <laughs> lifts it up carries it over what? dumps it in the thing success and then put another quarter in and you could like kind of tell it where to go but once once it starts it's committed <laughs> fucking picks up another super ball amazing you two just, super balls for 50 cents you just set them up for a lifetime of disappointment I know. Every other machine there ever is. I know. Well, I I won't let them play those things. Like <laughs> you know, like other than I have I have specifically taken you. You're not allowed to touch any. Of the, uh, you never have. You know, no Chuck E. Cheese. None of that. Like I, I can't stand it. Like you know, hey yeah. kids, feed this light. You know, like screaming music, flashing lights, piece of electronica, all of your money. Just feed it like it's a hungry animal, and in, in, in exchange, get a Tootsie Roll. No, I can't stand that. We won't do any of that. But for some reason, Marty's Playland was nostalgia. So, oh, here's the thing you can do at Marty's Playland. They had a, uh, you know, they've, they've got all these little ticket games. So you can sit here and whiz skee ball and get like nine tickets if you're really good. Nine tickets, sweet. So <laughs> then over on the other side where all the video games are, they had a Flappy Bird game. Now well, every kid in there is an expert at Flappy Bird. They have, they probably got to Ocean City playing Flappy Bird for 12, 15 hours straight, depending on where they came from. So, you know, my kids, just like anybody else, are total experts at Flappy Bird. So I see this little six-year-old, and I see on the, the Flappy Bird machine that it's like, you know, if you can get 100 in a row, you'll get 500 bonus tickets. Well, that's impossible. Nobody could, nobody's ever going to actually do any of that. So I watched this little six-year-old walk up. <coughs> he puts in, he puts in his couple of quarters. He starts playing it. One, two, three. It's a stupid game. <laughs> and he, it's mindless. He, and, and I kind of look around and come back. 89, 90, 91, 92. Oh, that kid's going to get it. 99, 100, 101, 102. Fucking kid got up to like 146 before the... He probably just got tired of playing and had to go to, had to, go to the bathroom. So now this thing has to spit out 646 tickets, <laughs> which takes way longer than anybody wants to, to wait for, for any of that. So then Bailey came up to play Flappy Bird, and he, did, he made this fatal flaw. He left his cup of quarters... He put it kind of like over here, and then he played Flappy Bird over there, and then when he came back, a cup of quarters is gone. So that was a hard life lesson. Yep. Would you have, let's say that happened to Amelia, would you give her more quarters? Um... Yeah, I probably would give her some more. What a pussy. I guess you're <laughs> made of money, Mark. <laughs> I said, 
nope, that's a hard lesson to learn. You gotta learn the lesson. And we're not, you know, absolutely not. Because otherwise, otherwise, you know, you learn that, you know, eh, whatever, Tom will bail you out. Nope. Yeah, that's true. You know, it, it is, we're gonna only be here for a while. We're gonna do something else later. But this is pain. You're gonna have to watch all the other kids play and be left out. This is the way it is. Because you failed to keep track. So I, I thought it was, you know, more important for him to feel the pain of, you know, sorry. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, I this guy, a big guitar, says I watched a ten-year-old girl get over fifteen hundred on flappy tickets. Yeah, how many? Like, how many tickets can even go in the machine? Like, that's just like spitting out. All of them, you know. Why is that station on? Oh, because damn students. Mm -hmm. da damn, the, the students? Well, <laughs> I've had rebound. How many Coca Colas have you had this morning? I don't drink Coca Cola. Um, this morning, it's not really morning. It's kind of. I mean, I just I just drove twelve hours and got here at about one thirty. So I'm just doing a quick job. Let's see. Maybe ask Lewis Rossman what adapter, since it's not standard. What are you talking about? What are you guys talking about? Look at Jess's collar that hold the camera. It has three screws on it and supposedly is a real Amscope. What are you talking about? This? Well, I moved that over from some other microscope. Let's see. I've been watching Lewis on and off since way back. Me too. All right, so let's... Hey, didn't I see you on Lewis Rossman's channel? Yes. Yes, you did. I went down there a couple weekends ago. We've had some... How many Aussies travel over there for the course? I think we've had three. And one guy from... Four? Yeah. One guy was from New Zealand. Oh, okay, yeah. That's easy to mix up. Yeah, you know, over there, kangaroo is, land. Does Tasmania count as Australia? Yeah, if, Tas if Tasmania does not count as Australia, then it's been half that. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, um, yeah. All right. Somebody's drinking Stella. All right, scrolling back in chat. Let's see. A nice cold Stella Artois. Destroying phones, losing tri stars and chestnuts. All right. Okay, and then we're back to Bill Cosby's guilt or innocence. I don't know. All right, so let's see. Um, do you think Bigfoot kidnapped Underdog? No, I think some old man kidnapped Underdog and took him to dog jail where I had to bail him out. Yes. <coughs> um, let's see. All right. Now let's look under the microscope and see how we did on our corrosion by chestnut. All right, so now that we take a look here, this cap seems pretty, pretty damaged. Let's measure him and look him up. I don't know who he is off the top of my head. So let's find out. Diode mode. What say you? What say you, red, probe, and ground? 0. 0.504, that seems pretty reasonable. All right, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and pull and replace Chestnut on the basis of the fact that he likely looks like a baby diaper underneath, but let's find out. Stick a quarter on here. Go back up to regular soldering, desoldering temperatures, and it will help dry off the board. 
Guess what I saw yesterday, Paul Daniels? I saw a kangaroo at the Blessing of the Combines. The Blessing of the Combines event back in my hometown of Snow Hill, Maryland. And I ran into my best friend from high school, who I haven't seen in at least 20 years, who happened to be sitting in Snow Hill, even though she lives in Colorado. That was totally random. Alright, so Chestnut didn't really look bad underneath at all. I don't think. So let's go ahead and clean that up and get a new one on there anyway, just to rule that out. I'm going to look up what that cap is that looks kind of ugly. What happens if you drop an iPhone on your foot wearing sandals? That's got to hurt. No. Why did they have a rue with a combine blessing? Um, I'm not really sure. They had... They had a lot of weird, weird stuff. They had, it was one lady, she had this kangaroo and she had a hedgehog. Hedgehog was kind of an asshole. And I don't really know what organization she was with or what the deal was there. All right, let's watch Jessa not braid pads because it's completely unnecessary and was be very likely to damage the board. And we don't want to spend a whole lot of unnecessary time. So as long as they're more or less flat, good to go. Good to go. All right, now we have to find a chestnut, which is going to be the hardest part of this job. Ooh, here we go, chestnut strips. Still where I left it. Yay! Let's see if there's a chestnut left in here. Ooh, a chestnut. Okie dokie. All right, I'm going to look up where my <coughs> um, fun fact kangaroo, most deadly animal on Australia. Do you have any zoos around your area? Yes, we've got we've got the Rochester Zoo. All right, I'm gonna look up on ZXW. Let's see if we can. Not sure if screen's working or not. Oh, it looks like it is working. Hooray! All right, so we'll move this. Um, where are we going? We want to find out where. Oh, that's that's six S plus six. Ow, oh, six S. The old chestnut. iPad Rehab, what do you think about the cheapest supersonic cleaner? I think that you would be wasting money when you could buy a uh, sweep frequency one that's not going to be the cheapest. And there we go, there's A1. Now who is this dude? 3VO Mesa. Fuck 3VO Mesa. That doesn't have anything to do with image. All right, so we'll stick our chestnut back on with the dot up there where it belongs. Um, in, I was sold on ultrasonic cleaners after I bought one specifically to shut up Lewis because I know that he did absolutely no research before making his video that was incredibly condescending saying, you got to buy a crest. If you're just using the jewelry, you're an idiot, blah, blah, blah. And I thought that he was full of shit because he had done no side-by-side -side or experimental comparisons. It was just opinion. I didn't think there was really going to be that much difference, so that's why I bought a Crest, and I um, did some side-by-side -side stuff with the old jewelry-style one that I had. And at first, when I put some pennies in there, I was like, yeah, they look the same. This guy didn't know what he's talking about. And I remember him saying, you better not post any kind of video. You're going to undo my life's work. We'll see. Then I had a board that was for data recovery that I had wires all over it and had been working on it. I had no idea what was wrong with it at the time.
stuck it in the new Crest Sweep Frequency Ultrasonic Cleaner, and it came out working. So I was the one that got spooled that day. All right, let's get this chip on there. And since then, we've had you know many times where we will get a board that comes for comes to us after it's already been to you know a standard shop that is a standard jewelry style cleaner, and we'll put it through the crest, and it comes out working. says crazy face McGee. Mm, I don't know what that is. Deadly man caused by my definition. Uh, what? That's the way Lewis shows his love. Lewis doesn't have any love. He is a Scrooge with a culture of a black heart. All right. Uh, okay, let's see. You can have them go off besides short and open circuit. I never got around to testing them. What, like caps? I've never seen that happen in an iPhone. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Last comment. What last comment? You gotta make, make it be where I can see it. Oh, thanks, Mark. I think we, all these should go through ultrasonic. All right, so now that it's been through ultrasonic, let's go ahead and make sure it doesn't, it, that it actually didn't just get fixed since we're sitting here talking about how great um, ultrasonic cleaners are. Let's give it a test. I really don't, nothing's really jumping out at me as why it wouldn't have image. Points to parts. Okay. All right, let's see. The man was a huge part of my childhood. I'm guessing where this is Bill Cosby. May God be with him through these trials. Some very evil people are trying to bring him down and make him out to be something. He's not, how do you know that? What's this? Uh, this is all a huge setup. Uh, people generally don't, you know, things that are a huge setup are pretty easy to disprove. I mean, I, th I, I think simple solutions are generally right. The KISS principle, keep it simple. When you have uh, multiple people with, with nothing to gain that are all kind of saying the same thing, either they're all lying or one guy's lying. I'll go with the one guy's lying. Alright, let's see. And it looks like it has image. Way to go, Crest! Or Chestnut. We don't really know. We didn't test it before we changed Chestnut. So that Chestnut, even though it didn't have corrosion under it, it could have had electrical damage since there was clearly corrosion in the area of Chestnut. So let's go ahead and get... Um, a screen on that we can see. So I just tried one of the ones that we tried before and it looks like we have image. But that screen was kind of half dark. What is up with this screen? Why is this not fitting in here? Something up with that? What's up with that? What's up with that? I'm gonna grab, start off fresh with a biscuit. All right. I've said my piece. 
says Psycho Puddin 84. Hmm, was that like Puddin Pops? Like Bill Cosby's Puddin Pops? We've got a screen on here, and let's actually go to a battery, since we know that it will boot on DC power. All right. Let's see if by some miracle this 6S battery is still charged. go back to DC power supply so that we can be sure we're getting it booting. All right, back on DC power supply, prompt to boot. Okay, and we have image, yay. All right, let's see if we have touch. can get a good battery. Certainly in larger electronics, I'll test power rails for poor filtering. Would never think to check a phone rail in such a way. I guess it could happen. That'd be pretty rare. Video review of the cheap ultrasonic cleaner. Is there any possible way to hear electricity? Kind of. <laughs> I'm new to board repairs and have a scope, Paco, blah, blah. Would your board school be a good place for me to go? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the we get complete noobs. We have had a hairdresser in here, you know. We get, we get you know, old retired guy that's never taken a board out of an iPhone before. So it's, um, and then we'll have people that have been, yay, touch, yay, yay, touch. I want to hear what her tunes are. Let's see. I wonder what I'm going to forget. A, a lot of stuff, but don't worry, because you'll be coming right <laughs> back. Yeah, nothing that I can't go nothing, to weeks without. Yeah, nothing, nothing. You know, you probably won't even remember before you're already back here. That's right. Yeah, all right, let's see. All right, so we had, we got a path of data. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm going to see what these fresh tracks are. Well, you've got no speaker. I know. Uh, I'm checking to see you in there. Look at that. Damn. Oh. The 200 different voice memos. Yeah, That's pretty cool. You'd think you'd name them. Which you did. New recording 199. <laughs> oh, yeah, 199. That's a, that's a fresh track. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there we go. I run my business based on the KISS principle. Great, so you know what's up with that. Okay, so we've got a path to data. So the moron, the moron did not screw. I don't think he really did anything wrong, honestly. I don't see any signs of any kind of uh, damage to the board at all from the rough ripping out of a battery. This was an image defect um, due to corrosion around chestnut area. Um, we didn't test whether or not this was just corrosion that was cleared by ultrasonic to bring image back to life, or if it was um, replacing chestnut, which we did, um, since there wasn't a whole lot of corrosion under it, but it could have had electrical damage and been not functional. So either way, that one is solved. Let's see if there's anything else here in the chat. I was pretty impressed, iPad Rehab, about, I don't remember. Pretty impressed about what? Not sure. Um, yeah, so Crazy Face McGee Practical Board Repair School is um, for anybody that wants to really learn what do all these dudes do? How do they fail? How do we measure them? How do we look at a schematic and understand how these things go together? How do we troubleshoot an open ended problem when we stare at a schematic? How do we get stop feeling like it's just all Greek and have it kind of make sense where you can, even if you don't understand, much of it that you can go all right it looks like 
power for this function would come from here and here. These lines could fail in these three ways. This is how I would test for that. It looks like data for this function comes in here. That kind of thing. A lot of hands-on technical proficiency. Us watching you do connectors and chips. Everybody's got to successfully do a micro BGA or we don't let them go home. Um, learning your signature faults. That's what practical board repair school is all about. All right. Um, okay. So what's Mark driving? A camper, a car, or a van? Minivan, of course. Good old Honda Odyssey. <coughs> All right. Uh, so I found the Atari. Oh, Honda thing. Odyssey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. those are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you can negotiate. <laughs> ah. Wait, you found the ski ball board? I did. Yes! It's it's really anticlimactic, though. Like, it's four obviously blown fuses. I still want to see what a ski ball board looks like. The other, the other thing I remember from Marty's Playland, I played the other, like, ancient game from from like 1950 that, that you roll the balls down and you can get an ace or a 10 or whatever. And mm -hmm. So Betsy played it and she got a full house, not that she knew what that was, and it didn't spit out the tickets. So then it's service at Pocorino. And I heard service at Pocorino at, at least, uh, at least <laughs> 10 times. All right, let's see. Wow, this thing is huge. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Microscope's not really we gonna. <laughs> microscope. We need a macroscope for this one. You need the 0.5 Barlow lens so you can yeah, I do. zoom out. I'm gonna have to go. Wow. Jeez. Wow. Is that, you think, how they were always attached? Look at yeah, the, no, look, I don't think. I think they've the, been like, replaced before. You think? Look at the <laughs> solder balls that are, like, in that one. Like, yeah. you can see the, the, the explosion and the little mm -hmm. little solder balls. This kind of looks like a Bill Jones repair, I'll have to say. Did he do this one before? Uh, who is... Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, what I want is for him to be able to change these fuses without soldering. Mm -hmm. And I want, I want them to mount into something so that he can just swap yeah, them out. Yeah, you can get little things off Mouser to yeah, do that. that we, they'll just, like, pop in. Yeah, that's the right repair for this guy. Wow, this yeah. is cool, though. So this runs skee-ball. This is all skee-ball is, is just a well, couple that, of no. traces? No, no. These two boards are also <coughs> from it, which he doesn't believe have any problems, but he brought them also. How does ski ball get overheated or whatever? Wow. This is the one where where uh, it's going to know whether you've got 50 or 40. Let's just tweak it so that you always get a 50. <laughs> cool. Ski ball board. See, I love the fix odd shit repairs. And this this one has an interesting jumper from the back of the board through a via to the top. So where did he get these from? Is this something he bought like broken on eBay? Uh, I did not ask. What's his business? Does he sell like vintage? I mean, it, it seems or? you know he's got a Atari and yeah. I mean, is he a machine. hobbyist or is he like doing stuff? You know, because one of the businesses in Snow Hill seems to be. I love this, like sort of rejuvenation of old towns, like this town or the town I grew up in. The businesses that can really survive in a tiny town like this are ones like this, where we're heavily mail-in repair mm -hmm. and training. You know, mm -hmm. So whether or not anyone ever walks in the front door doesn't matter, but this space can have stuff going on, it can have window displays, there's people here, there's lights on, it feels like a town, and yet the town doesn't actually have to just intentionally throw their phones in the snow in order for the <laughs> business to stick around. And that was the same thing that's going on at Snow Hill. I loved it that they had this really amazing toy town. It was called, I think, Toy Town in Snow Hill on the corner. It, totally mail and repair, but it was an amazing, almost like museum of old toys. That I, I think it would be cool to have kind of a primarily online business that did oh that's that jumper you're talking about yeah whoa 
What's the thought process behind this? I want to know. Where does that trace go? You know, I have a primarily online business that then you had a physical retail presence. Blue. Oh, it's blue. Blue wire. Maybe it was always like that. Um, that you could have vintagey ski ball. Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be awesome. You should have the uh, the guy who dropped it off. Yeah, so let me go deliver. Nate, have him come in. Nate, yeah, tell Nate to bring his ski ball thing down here. I'll get my truck. I'll clean. <laughs> I'll clean all of the crap from this trip out of my truck if he'll let me play ski ball. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. All right, what else do we have to do? With that? Um, trust the electronics engineer who designed the board. What are we talking about? One guy lying. Isn't that one of those statements a class of students make about their teacher? Uh, like, you know, that doesn't make any sense. All right, she will see it in time. I do love me some pudding pops. You know, I saw you can you can make your own pudding pops. I saw this when I took the girls to Walmart recently. All right, should have when it works. It's good enough as long as it keeps working until the warranty runs out. Oh man, yeah. you're, you're back on Puddin' Pops. You are a long time ago. No, I'm not. Ten minutes ago. What? Three Did I get minutes. a specific insert for the trinocular simulfocal camera port on your microscope? No. Well, yeah, you got the uh, the focusing thing there. A specific insert? <laughs> you know, I can't answer that. We have thousands of these different adapters that come from all sorts of different vendors and microscopes. So, you know, this is all just a big mix. I recently upgraded this microscope. Yeah, this is a new AM scope. And I remember that I had to, that whatever it came with, I had to unscrew this port and swap it with one of the Amano ones to keep the adapter that I've been using. Um, the last AM scope I had, I did not have to do that. So. I don't Mine really was know. a nightmare to set up. It was, I went through like three different things that I ordered and finally ended up like wrapping tape around something that was smaller and shoving it into something that's bigger. Yeah, I feel like every time, <laughs> like I never did figure out how to use the latest like Chinese microscope, it wouldn't fit any adapter at all. So I have a reputation for saying controversial stuff. Me too. And speaking my mind, me too. I mean, no harm. Okay, great. Well, I don't really, I, I can't comment on things that I haven't really um, spent very much time thinking about, so I don't really have, have an opinion. All right, what else? Hey, Jessa, did the collar you changed have a prism on it? Hmm, Whew, that's going to be hard. I'm going to go with yes, I think it did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. And did it come from a cheap Chinese model scope? Yes, that looked the same as the end scope model you have. Yes. It would have come from one of the Amanos, which I believe are exactly the same as the M scopes. Um, it, you know, I swapped it out. It maybe even came from a different AM scope. Jessica, go one up on Lewis and use a steam cleaner for board repair. Eh. All right, what are we doing? It's working. I have fixed backlight circuits and connectors and junk. Don't want to jump into the uncommon stuff. Okay. Um, when is Mark supposed to start driving? Uh, in a couple hours. Uh, yeah. And Tell him he needs to get some sleep. Right. Well, Cecilia's going to start driving in probably like. Wait, when you seven said hours. we're leaving at at noon, did you mean well, Cecilia's driving at six? But well, we're getting up at ten <laughs> and getting on the road by noon. Okay. All right. Whoa! What the fuck is that? Uh, no, but Mark has many times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. High class minivan. Big spinner. Yeah, there you go. Uh, how many of these iPhone connections were you? You know, I fix it. Jim, Jim Bush or Boucher. Also, connectors are rated for insertion and disconnects. Makes one wonder how many of these iPhone connectors are rated for. I think I fix it. Figured that out by calling up the manufacturer. I think it was seven. Um, the iPad mini is rated for one. <laughs> <laughs> we know that empirically. 
All right, let's see. Helping. Jessa, why don't you provide an online course? Because it is an art, not a science, and the course really depends on my in-person teaching style. Um, I, I it, it wouldn't be the same online. I get that everybody wants that, but that's just not the thing. I really like teaching, and the class is fun, and it is heavily dependent on feedback in response to the facial expression of people that I'm talking to and coming up with funny examples and making analogies and really pinpointing when someone's not understanding and sitting down and making it a fun group environment so that people kind of really get pulled in. It's like we're telling a bunch of stories. It's just not something. It's This is not a class where it's like, fill in the blank, blank. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Why do you think we could make an online course? No, I, I think if all we were interested in doing was making money, then yeah, you could do that and make money and you know yeah, make some really kind of shitty you. content for an online course. But to for to to do what we do every month, that could not be done just online. Yeah, it's it's just way too dynamic. All right, let's see. Uh, I've never seen. The caps fail, especially due to heat. Sure, they do. Mechanical stress makes them physically break or internally shorten. Deep. Yeah. Okay, maybe not heat, but heat plus dropper. All right. Are you guys still using Repair Shopper? Yes, we love Repair Shopper. Totally sign up, use it. It's tough to, uh, tough to get it working, but once you do, it's amazing. Because she believes in hands-on approach. Plenty of YouTube content. Exactly. All right, um, mechanical, do blah, 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 blah. I think that's what I need to be doing. Uh, let's get through. I agree, though not as small as your town, this town, I really do need to move more to mail-in jobs. Yes, exactly. It's hard to get business here locally in my rural town in North Carolina. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was blown away. I mean, my I was so happy to go back and see. I mean, my, this is a little piece of shit town. I mean, we have a thing called Blessing of the Combines. <laughs> but it was beautiful. They did this toy town store. was amazing. And I wanted to go in there. And then they had this amazing candy store that had a local farm that uh, just started doing ice cream so they had these like almost like artisan ice creams that were not just the same um, whatever brand you know briars that everybody is selling in every ice cream shop so they had this sort of like kind of handcrafted ice cream and then all this sort of old school candy that that's a it's near the school people walk by there kids are going to go in there and buy candy it was awesome they had another guy that had set up this kind of like eclectic spice store i don't know that the spice guy is going to be able to last but it was a cool thing if he starts doing online the shtick of hey i've traveled the world and tried all these small batch spices and these are the ones that i think are amazing he could kind of make a name doing that but he will definitely need to be comment whore all right ipad rehab have you ever worked on computer cars the only car job we did, we actually, you know, I have a stream. I recorded a video. This was funny because Gene fixed this board that went into the engine of a BMW. I think it was something like a fuel injection thing. And it was, you know, obvious bad component change with same component. And then we were like, let's not stream this until we're sure this guy doesn't die because the car <laughs> blows up. Now, you know, so as far as we know, everything's working. We should put that video back up. <laughs> All right, let's see. Are we done? You are let's forever. Get done. We're caught up to where you were like, let's read the chat. <laughs> 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 Seven minutes ago. Uh, let's see. Why do capacitors look like towers? Because it's got a... The story of your life, Mark! <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, am, I am the only one that works on boards of the shop. Rewards points on the Amex to play for my flight hotel to whatever repair school I go to. Well, don't go to any... If you're not coming here, then don't go. I mean, there's nothing that any, that you can learn at, at... I mean, there's 
where else are you gonna go? I mean, you, you could sit here and learn. You could sit, anyone can learn technical proficiency. Just try it for a really long time. Watch videos, try it yourself. There's no need to go to a school to learn how to do connectors and backlights and stuff like that. Is that a one three adapter on? I do not know. Don't know. Oh, it says CTV one dash two. There you go. All right. With what I'm paying for now, it's starting to make a lot more sense to use Repair Shopper. Yeah, it's amazing to use. I mean, it's great for Repair Shopper. It can tell you, you know, your productivity, manage inventory. It's really awesome. All right. Hands on teaching, yes. I want to know about Jesso's camera and the microscope. I don't know what it's called. Blessing of the Towns. Uh, I hear you loud and clear. I think it's awesome. Small business serve my computer. Yes, exactly. It was beautiful oh, there. So close. Yes, I'm at the oh, end. Did it. Yay! <laughs> All right. Uh, good night, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are done. We fixed this one, and uh, the moron is off the hook. Um, he did not cause any damage, so we're gonna get this uh, songs offloaded. See you next time.